Hi everyone. Today I want to share my approach to creating a mounting like this one. Um, I've been wanting to try a vintage style mounting for a while and um, recently had to do something similar so I just wanted to share my approach. Um, I'm going to be using matrix gold dynamic tools to create a mounting that's totally parametric and easy to edit all the way to the end. Um, but I also really want, especially with a vintage style piece, um, to kind of build it in a way that um, closely aligns with how it would have been, um, how it would have looked or, or been built um, in the past. So anyway, let's just get started. Then. So I had some pictures to work with. Um, just several views of the mounting. Um, I have seen quite a few of these in person, so I have a general sense of how they should look. Um, but the pictures definitely help to guide, and so I'm just going to leave them around for reference, and I'm going to slide this one out of the way. Okay, so the first thing to do obviously and uh, with any ring is to start with the ring rail. I'm just going to let it default to 7, that's fine. Um, and then the next thing to do would be to establish the gemstones we're going to use. Uh, so in this case I'm going to build this mounting in two halves. So I'm going to make a center stone and then the three stones on the shoulder. So I'm going to use gems on the ring rail for the first one. Uh, carrot is fine. I'm not going to get too specific here. Um, and maybe I'll just bump it up to about 1.5. Um, and now I'm going to create some baguettes. So I'm going to just use gem on ring rail again. And I'm going to slide this over this way. I'm going to come over here to the shape and scroll down to baguette. Um, I think I'll start with something that's about 4. Uh, 4 by 1.5 seems fine to me. So I'm just going to right click to accept that. And um, I'm just going to start labeling these since I'm going to make a few. So I'm going to just call this one center. And then uh, before I label this one, I'm just going to select it and then I'm going to use control copy. So control C and then I'm going to um, use control V twice to make two more baguettes. <coughs> okay. Okay, so I'll start um, by naming this first one. I'm going to call this one 4 by 1.5. And then I'm going to edit the next one. I'm just going to drag it down. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So I think I'm going to go for 3, maybe 3 by 1.5. That looks good. So I'm just going to rename it. And then I'm going to right click and then edit this last one. And this one I'm going to rotate uh, to 90. And then I'm going to bring it down in size, maybe 2.75 by 1. Point I'll do 1.5. Yep. Okay. And then just quickly rename it. All right. So now I have my three stones. Um, and so the next thing to do would be to create the heads. Um, so for this center head, I'm going to need something that's square, actually. Um, so I'm going to create one more gem on ring rail that we're going to use kind of like a dummy stone. Um, 
so I'm going to just keep the gem on real and then instead of round I'm gonna make it a princess and I'm just gonna bring the girdle up to the same oops to the same location roughly and then I'm going to bring it out um, I actually want it to be right around 6.4 so I'm gonna unlock the aspect ratio and just fill in these myself. I'm gonna make it just shy actually. Six oh, six point three five. That's good. Okay. Um so now I have oops, brought it up too high. Let's just bring it down from the front. Okay, yeah, so like as I said, I want the girdles to be roughly in the same place. Okay, so um, there are a lot of great um, setting choices here, um, but I'm going to do something different. Um, I'm going to use gem cutters as my heads, so not only as my heads, but also as gem cutters. Um, so uh, I I made uh, a recent tutorial about this where I go more in depth, um, but so I'll just kind of do a fast version. So I'm going to um, select my princess stone and I'm going to select gem cutter. Um, and I'm just going to change some of these parameters so that what I have is basically just a nice solid extrusion that I can use um, as a head. So I am going to come into Azure and um, I'm going to just change most of these parameters so I get uh, what I'm looking for. Okay, so the placement is fine. I'm going to make the top offset 1 in both directions and I'm going to make the length 0, uh, 0 0.05. And then I'm going to keep rotation 0 and then I'm going to do the same for the table. I'm going to make the table length uh, 0.5 and rotation 0 and then the girdle offset also 1 by 1. Uh, girdle thickness is good 0.05. I'll keep uh, girdle rotation at 0 and now I'm going to just change the seat length. I want to make a seat length that intersects with my ring rail so I'm going to use um, five. Oh, that's too much. Two. Maybe even less. Well, two is fine. Okay. And then I'm actually going to zero all of these out. And then, um, and maybe I will change the offset to 0.5 in both directions. Um, okay. So now I have a nice solid extrusion that I can use as my seat. And so I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to rename this custom bezel. Um, and I'm going to call it center. And then I'm going to right click. Okay, and now I can hide, actually let's rename this one too. I'm going to call it just a dummy and I can hide it. I won't really need it. Um, anymore. Okay, so I now um, want to make a few of these. I want to make one of this type of setting for each of these baguettes. So I'm going to come under the tools menu and match attributes and I'm going to select my objects to apply my style to. That's these. And I'm going to select the object to take it from, which is this one. Oh, actually no, it's this one. Let's just show it again. Sorry, I hid that too soon. Let me try that again. So um, obviously the round is the center that I want, but uh, I'm taking the style from this princess. So let's just try that again. Match attributes, these guys, this one. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, so that is not working. I wonder if I... Let's see. Okay. Let's 
try again. No. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, that's not a problem. We can just um, make a copy. So I'm going to use Control C, and then I'm going to create three additional copies. So I'm going to do Control V three times, and then I'm just going to sit and wait for it. Match attributes would make a copy anyway. It's not uh, too different. You just have to then go in and make sure that you associate the particular stone with the particular uh, object. So that's what I'll do. Okay. Oh, I may have to do it one more time, but let's just do these first. So I'm going to change the name to this one. Custom bezel. And I'm going to make this one 4 by 1.5. And then I'm going to change the stone to this guy. All right, and then I'm going to do the same, change the name. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to stop now. And I'm going to press escape, and I'm actually going to delete this one. I'm going to rename this one. Uh, I'm giving these all the same name because I want them to be in the same place uh, on my dynamic commands list when I'm looking for them. Okay, so first I'm actually going to change the parameters of this one, and then I'm going to copy it um, and associate it with these two. Okay, so let's just open this up. Um, obviously, I want a deeper seat. Um, all of these measurements are... Uh, percentages, so obviously the percentage uh, associated with that princess cut and the seat length is going to be different than this uh, baguette. So I just have to kind of do a little bit of guessing, and five seems right. Okay, so the main difference between this one and this one is that I want um, I want to create a bezel uh, with this. So I need for the girdle as well as the table and the top offset to be about 0.5 outside of the girdle all the way around the stone. And um, I can't just easily say 0.5 anywhere here, but I can um, figure out what the percentage is, um, how, how much uh, I need to add to the offset in order to get to 0.5. And that's pretty simple. So I know the stone is 4 by 1.5. So I know I want my bezel to be 5 by 2.5, and so I'm just going to quickly find the uh, percentage there. Um, I'm going to say uh, f 5 divided by 4 is 1.25, so I'll just make note of 1.25, and then I'll say 2.5 divided by 1.5 is 1.67. So I'll make a note of that, and then I'm going to close the calculator. And so in these offset values, I'm just going to enter those numbers. So um, so for the x offset, I'm going to say 1.67, and for the y, 1.25, and then same thing here. And um, same thing here. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to just, you know, bring my seat out a little bit. And you can play with these offsets as you go along. You'll kind of um, be trying to match the uh, the shape of the center stone, probably. But that looks pretty good, so I'm just going to right click and accept that, and then I'm going to select this and then control copy, control V, so because these next baguettes are different sizes, you'll just need to change the offsets to reflect uh, 
the percentage of offset you want. Um, so first let's just associate them. So I'm going to edit this and I'm going to change the name. Okay, and let's just double check the math here. So I'm going to open my calculator again. So of course this bezel I want to be um, 4 by 2.5. So I know the ratio and the x is correct, but I'll need to come up with a new one for the y. So I'm just going to say 4 divided by 3, and that's 1.33. So instead of 1.25, I'm going to make it 1.33, and then I can leave the other the same. So I'll just go down the list. And this is just ensuring that the, I mean, you can certainly eyeball that, but um, I just like to know that it's going to be about 0.5. Um, I like to be able to predict that ahead of time. And then f I'm just going to right click. And then finally, let's do this last one. Um, and I recall, yeah, so we can leave again um, the, we can leave the, um, well, since this is rotated, we're going to change the offsets in a different way. So first I'm going to rename this. Oh. Forgot the custom bezel part. Okay. Uh, and so I'm just going to open this one last time. I'm going to say 3.75 divided by 2. 0.75 is 1.36. All right, so um, I'm going to just leave the, uh, in this case it's the x because this stone is rotated, but I'm going to change this 1.25 to 1.36, and this one, and this one. All right, so um, that does it pretty much for those. So now we have our seats. Um, all figured out and basically now we just need to kind of position the stones and um, and then cut these seats to the ring rail. So um, I am going to just m jiggle these around a little bit more. So I'm going to um, bring this one down a little bit, maybe to about here. And then I kind of want the um, Let's do this wireframe mode. I kind of want this girdle of this stone to be um, undercutting this seat above it. So I'm going to just slide it over a bit. And um, maybe bring it down just a little bit more. OK. And then right click. And then I'm just going to adjust this one. And again, these are really easy to edit as you're going along. So you can kind of get it where you think it's about right. And then, you know, if you need to change it later, you can change it. All right. So um, before I, uh, oops, before I cut these to the ring rail, I'm going to make these three pieces just one solid piece. So I'm going to come up here to surface of solid and Boolean difference. Oh, what I mean is Boolean union. So I'm going to select this one first and then the and then these two. Oh. Ah. It's a difference. Okay. Boolean union. This one and this So now it's one solid piece, and then now I'm going to cut each one. Well, first let me just label this so I don't forget. Okay, uh, and now I'm going to, I have put some of the dynamic commands into my quick commands panel, so I'm going to just use cut to ring rail. I'm going to first cut this one. These are looking a little low, so I might need to change that. I'm going to rename this side, right click, and then run that command again and just do my center head. 
And I'll name this one Center. All right. Yeah, so let's just take a look here. My first version, the stones were a bit higher. Um, and I think that's the case here too. So I'm just going to, before I go any further, I'm just going to lift these all up just a little bit. Um, so I want my s offset to be 2. And right click. Uh, so I'm adding just one. So uh, I'm going to make this one 1 1.8. And then this one um, 1 1.4. Okay, that's better. Okay, so now maybe uh, this would be a good time to add a an outside ring rail. So I'm going to come up here to Tools, Outside Ring Rail. I think I want to go with something a little different, maybe... This one's fine, and I'm just going to lift it up. That looks good. Um, and I'm going to create a shank, so I'm going to use profile, up, profile Placer. And then I'm going to choose Outside Curve. And let's just bring this down here. I'm going to change this to something uh, half round, and I'm going to bring it in to 1.8, and then bring another one up here. And uh, as I mentioned, I'll be just creating this in um, two halves, so I just need one profile. I'm going to just call this one shank. And now I'm going to create a, no, this one, two, using these, and I'm just going to make my half my shank now. All right, so I have the basic body of the ring now. Um, so what I need to do next is to um, cut these windows and create this cutter as well. And I'm going to do that in two different ways. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is create this uh, window. And so I'm going to use some offsets to do that. So I'm going to select my ring rail and then I'm going to um, come up here to curve and um, where is it? Offset. Um, one is fine. I'm going to rename this ring rail. That's fine. And then I'm going to create an offset from this one as well. So I'm just right clicking to run that again. Um, actually, you know what? I am not going to do that. I'm going to create another outside ring rail. Alright, so this one I'm going to call shank. And I'm just going to come over here to uh, outside ring rail. Um, gonna change the top a little bit. Let's just look in a wireframe here. And I'm gonna bring this in. Okay, I'm just, if you can see, I'm just trying to create, like, between using this offset and this outside ring rail, a nice shape here um, for this cutout. So, this looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna call this one um, for cutter. Okay. Now I'm going to use the trim command right here. I'm going to trim this curve. Um, let's see here. I'm going to bring it up here. I just want to go past my side settings, so somewhere maybe into my center setting. And then I'm going to just come short of this third setting. Uh, I'm trying to use this picture as reference. And you can see here that the cutout, or it's not really a cutout. This would have been fabricated as two pieces. But uh, for casting purposes, we're going to just make a cutout. So um, it stops short of this third one. So that's what I'm trying to match. Um, so that's fine. And I'm just going to call this one um, ring rail. 
and then I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to right click to run trim again. I'm going to bring this up here and this one all the way over here. I'm going to call this outside ring rail. That looks good. Now I'm going to use blend curves. I'm going to select this one and this one and I'm just going to flip these and maybe um, make the blend amount a little bit more. Maybe one. That looks good. And I'm going to join those. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Now, why is that happening? Okay, well either way that's fine. I'm going to join them and then I'm going to just edit the trim a little bit. So I can open up trim um, and I can just slide this this way. All right, and then I'm just going to, I'm going to call this one uh, one, and then I'm going to just run that again. Where is it? Blend curves. And I'm just going to select these two. Even though it's one curve now, it will give you two handles, and then you can kind of use the two handles to, um, to make one piece that connects. So I'm going to just pull these out and then I'm going to say join. Ah, same thing here. So I'm going to, oh weird. Hmm. Let's see why that's happening. Hmm. Interesting. I'm, in this case, not going to join them, and I'm just going to leave it as it is. For some reason, joining them isn't working that well, so I'm going to just bring this one back by saying show, and then I'm going to use dynamic join to join them myself. So I'm going to select this one and this one, and then I'm going to call this side cutter. And then right click. Alright, so this should be one closed curve, but now it is. And, um, you know, I can edit any part of this at any time. So, like, for example, if I wanted it to be closer to my ring rail, I could just come to my offset and then change the, uh, the size here, or whatever. Uh, so that is easy to edit, and you can change the shape of the outside ring rail if you want something that's different. Uh, Okay, actually I am going to just do one thing because I don't love this. Oh, I'm just going to pull it in. Actually, I'm going to pull it this way for both to make it just a little bit smaller. Okay, all right. Uh, so now we need to make the cutters for this area here. Um, and for that, I'm going to actually just grab this um, I'm going to use control alt center put it in the center and then I'm gonna scale it so it's similar it's just maybe like this okay so let me hide my stone so I basically want something like this happening uh, like a a, a half circle and then this kind of um, it's almost like a gumdrop shape here. So I'm going to um, I'm actually going to come from the side here and back this off the center a little bit. Maybe like this. And then from the front I'm going to just lock my white layer so I shouldn't be able to move it. I'm going to use red now so it's really easy to see and I'm going to um, start with a circle so I'm going to just type circle I'm going to put the origin in the center uh, oh, I'm going to try that again I want a deformable circle actually and 12 points is good I'm going to put the origin in the center and now I'm just going to edit the control points a bit 
so I get a nice shape like that. I like doing it this way because you end up um, without like hard points. So I'm just grabbing these and um, left clicking on the scaling handle to zero these out. I'll bring them up. And actually, let's just do this in front of the thing itself. Um, I'm going to lock green for a minute and yellow so I don't. Oh. Well, that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to just bring these up and all of these down. And then these down here. That looks pretty good. Uh, I think I want to just grab these and then I'm holding Alt and Shift so that I'm only selecting the things that I want and I'm just going to give it like a more of a um, curve and then I'm just going to lift this center one up. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I can always change it, um, but I'm going to keep it like this for now. And now to make this second shape here, I'm just going to hold Alt and pull this one up. Turn the points back on, and um, I'm just going to move these around a bit. I'm going to bring this few up, bring it in like this, and then I'm going to just um, make these planar by same thing, pressing on the scaling handle and making it zero. Um, and I think I'll just um, see. Yeah, actually, I'm just going to make these a little bit wider. You know what? I think I need just one more point. So I'm going to say insert control point. I'm going to select my curve, and then I'm going to make midpoint yes, so I can put one on either side in the same place. So it stays symmetrical. Uh, okay, so I'm going to just drag these down, kind of like I did with the last one, more to match what the, the this curve a little bit more. And then, then I'm going to bring these up, and then just this one. Um, so this is pretty good, feeling okay about it. I'm going to just bring this down so that this is more of an extreme. All right, and then maybe these up just a bit more. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to use um, a similar curve to go um, in the east-west direction. So like here, you can see that this is like the curve I just made and this one is similar but it's just flat so I'm going to um, I'm just gonna make one more um, I'm going to just hold alt and I'm gonna drag this up but I kind of want it to match so I'm gonna turn the points on and I'm gonna grab the points and I'm gonna zero them out and drag them down that. I'm going to drag the top guys up, down, so they match. And um, maybe I'll just bring these out also. Or in, maybe. Um, that's pretty good. So I'm going to use this one in the other direction. Uh, okay, so for right now, I'm going to... Um, Maybe make this one a little bit smaller. That looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to put these red curves in the center just by Control Alt Center. And I'm going to rotate them so they're lying flat like this. Okay, uh, I'm going to turn this off, unlock it. I'm going to unlock this and I'm going to bring these back. Okay, so um, a lot of times it's great to use Profile Placer, but I'm going to use um, Object on Curve because I just think um, since I'm 
Anyway, I just like it better for this reason. You can kind of live edit your object on curve in a way that isn't possible uh, with a profile placer. The profile editor can be kind of tricky, so I'm going to just do it this way. So I'm and let's put it like this. Um, um, and now in objects, I'm going to select these two, this one and this one right click so you can see them there and now I just want to make only one and I want to preserve its size and then I want to um, rotate it or angle it 90 and then I'm gonna go from the front oh, let's actually bring this back I want to match the height roughly so I'm gonna just Okay, so the, the placement handle has a max of two, but you can just enter it like this. Uh, so 3.5 was a good-ish guess. I'm going to make it 3.2. Well, actually, you know, 3.5 is fine. Okay, that looks fine. I'm going to just go with that. All right, so now, because I'm going to make more than one, where is it? I'm going to just call it... Um, these are going to create the cutters in the north-south direction, so I'm going to just call it north-south. Okay, and now I'm going to just run that command one more time. I'm going to select this curve in the objects. And now I'm going to select this one with the flat bottom. And again, I'm going to make the count toggle 1 and preserve its size. Um, I'm going to angle it to 90 and then also roll it to 90. And then what I want to do is kind of match that top uh, of the shape with the top with the top of my red curve. So I'm going to just use placement again. This one isn't going to be exactly the same because I'm only placing one object. Uh, so you can see, so uh, it's green, so it's hard to see, but you can see this, maybe if I put it in, yeah, you can see this beginning to emerge. So I want to line this up with this, so I'm going to say 4, 4.2, I'm just guessing here, 4.5, see, are those oh, maybe a little less, 4.4, yeah, that looks good. All right, so now this shape is going to match more or less with the other one. Okay, so now I have my cutters for the top. Um, and so I'm going to make some extrusions now, um, not only from this side cutter, but from these as well. So I'm going to open curve and say extrude curve. First I'm going to do these two. And I'm going to say cap both sides and I'm going to just bring them way out. I call this uh, north south. Right click. I'm going to run that again but with this one same thing. Um, where's the handle? This way out. I'm going to call this one east west. And then one more time for this down here. And I'm just going to call this side OK. All right, so now let's see where we're at. So we have, uh, it's OK that this is colliding with the center head because I'm, these two pieces are going to be separate anyway. Um, Okay, so the final thing we need now is, let's just turn yellow off for a minute, is um, the gem cutters. So let's start with the center. I'm going to grab, actually, you know what, we're going to do one more thing here. I'm going to turn this princess dummy back on. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Show. And then I'm going to use um, a, where is it? A gem offset curve. There it is. I'm going to select my princess 
And then I'm going to bring this in to point negative point 0.3. I'm going to right click to accept. Now let's look. Where is that? Oh, it's I would be on yellow. Okay. This is getting so crowded and hard to see, but let's just try here. Um, so let me hide this. Okay, so this is my offset curve that I just created. I want to project this offset curve to the top um, because I want to make a push-pull surface like this one so that I can create these prongs um, for rendering purposes. So I'm going to use the command project, dynamic project, and I'm going to just select this object and I'm going to press enter and make sure that project to top is selected. I'm going to right click and now I'm going to use um, push, pull push. I'm going to select my curve. So I have to hold uh, control shift since um, the project command created multiple curves wherever they intersect with this um, with this poly surface. So I'm going to hold control shift to grab this one and then I'm going to select my surface and I'm just going to say um, point negative point three. All right so now um, let's turn yellow off again. Now we just need to create our gem cutters. Actually let's, I'm going to put this center he head on green. Okay so um, I'm going to do the center one first. I'm going to just grab this stone and then um, I'm going to leave everything pretty much as it is. Um, but one thing I'm going to change is at the bottom, both the seat and the bottom. So I'm going to select seat profile override here and also here. And this is just defaulting to this rectangle. There are lots of other shapes you can use, but the rectangle is fine. I'm going to leave it square anyway. Um, so from the front, I'm going to just change the seat a bit. And then uh, I'm going to make this um, 0.6 by 0.6, uh, maybe even 0.7. And this might be too much, I don't know. I'm going to leave the bottom the same. Um, and I'm just going to right click to accept that. All right, I do want, um, oh, you know what? I'm just going to bring this in a little bit. Um, I have the girdle offset. At, I want to make it one. Okay. Um, all right, so now let's just name this one center. Okay. And now I'm going to make uh, three more for these guys. I'm going to do them all at the same time. And I'm not being super duper duper careful with these. Um, I don't want the seat bottoms to go all the way through. And that is because I want to make, oops, where do my pictures go? I want to make um, like an under gallery that looks more like this. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that, but I'm not going to bring the seat um, bottoms all the way through. I'm just going to back them up so that they are, let's go from the front here, um, so that they're about like that. And then um, I will change the top length and then that looks pretty good. I. I want them to, um, let's see here, I want the table offset to be more like 0.9. I still do want these to be kind of undercut, but, um, okay. I think this stone is too far away, but I can change that in a little bit. Okay, so now I have my gem cutters. So now I'm going to um, create one more cutter, and that is what I just talked about. Uh, I'm going to create a shape that can cut this area out. And I learned a cool trick yesterday um, that saved me so much time, and I'm going to show you what that is right now. 
and maybe you all already know about this and you're like that's we all knew about that for so long um, I'm gonna use MSR objects um, actually I watched a tutorial made by Gemvision about how to use this to hollow out a signet but it worked really well for this so I'm um, gonna select this object and now um, it's a little bit hard to see here but I'm just gonna begin sizing this it looks like I'm sizing that uh, boolean that thing my um, seat but I'm not it will come back in a second um, and I'm going to just slide it up here and then I'm going to right click just to see where I'm at. So because I used, because I created an MSR object out of my um, cut to ring rail, I'm going to just have to bring that back. So I'm going to show it um, and let's just put this one that I'm cutting with it on a different layer so we can see it. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to keep editing that. Where is it? Uh, I'm going to just bring it down so it's sticking through. Let's see where we're at now. Um, okay. This looks pretty good. I actually want it to um, punch all the way through this, so I'm going to just change its orientation a little bit. I'm going to move it this way. Um, Okay, and I can keep editing it. This is fine for now. So um, the only thing is that it has this top part, which I don't really want. So um, if you remember, I created some offsets. I'm going to just create another offset. Actually, I don't know why I turned yellow on. I'm going to create another offset that just trims the top off. So I'm going to grab this and... Where is it? here and I I want to cut um, further than one so maybe like um, this I'm gonna say 1.2 that looks fine and now I'm going to grab this offset and my outside ring rail and I'm going to use extrude curve and I'm just going to both and then make both sides and now from the front I'm gonna just use a boolean difference to trim the top off so here we go I'm gonna select my cutter and now my extrusion okay all right so now I have all the cutters that I need so I'm going to cut and we'll see how we did so let me just name this one. This is a difference. So I'm just going to say D um, side cutter and extrusion. Okay. So, all right. So now I'm going to start with my center head. So I'm going to use Boolean difference. I'm gonna grab my center head and then I'm going to select this, these, and this. And that looks pretty good. All right. I'm going to call this. Uh, center. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to grab my center, I mean my side, and I'm going to use this and these and this. All right, and that's looking pretty good too. Let's just rename it. Okay, um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, but I think I need to make some adjustments. I'm going to move this. I want my the girdle of this stone to be like really right up underneath this one. So I'm going to just adjust that. A location to something like this. And as you can see, it just updates. It's really quite nice. Uh, and then obviously I'm just going to move my shank a little bit closer like that. Um, so it is really, really flexible. You know, you can play around with the seat cutter for this guy. Um, but that's pretty much it. 
So I think the last thing I'm going to do is just add some prongs here. Um, again, when I was sitting at the bench, I think we would have approached this by creating, oh, and maybe I'll change the seat a little bit here. Um, we would have put like a flat plate here and then just um, raised beads and pushed them over. So, you know, you can manipulate this for casting in whatever way you see fit. Um, you know, you probably wouldn't add these parts to it, but just, you know, in case somebody wants to um, see a rendering, this is just a way to get to that finished look and keep it parametric. Uh, but I am going to just quickly change this. I don't like this. I think it needs to be a little bit less. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so let's just add some prongs from the top. I'm going to turn red off. Whoop. Okay, this is getting really long. Thank you so much for being patient. Okay, so I'm going to select this surface, and now I'm going to come down here, and I want to say all prongs and X and Y mirror. Uh, I'm going to make these maybe 0.6. And again, this is really just for um, rendering purposes. Let's make them a little bit bigger. Um, you know, or maybe you can find a way to place prongs like this and make it all work. I don't know. Uh, that's good enough. I'm going to be just a little bit bigger. And then let's just make sure, yep, from the side, we'll just bring them down. Uh, this is a fairly new feature to be able to mirror these and m affect all prongs at once. I really like it a lot. Okay, and then we're going to just bring this whole chunk over here and we're going to mirror it across. There we go. Okay. So that's pretty much it. And, you know, obviously this is very crispy looking. Um, you can do things to it, um, at, you know, fill it some of these edges or use chamfers or whatever you want to do. Um, but at this stage, it's so for example, let's uh, change the ring rail. Um, because I tied um, those objects uh, that these curves to object on curve, those will update automatically with the ring size. Um, that's why I didn't just kind of put them on the plane in, in my viewport. So let's just change it. Let's bring it up like to a size nine. So that updates pretty nicely. Let's bring it way down. Let's see. How about to a size 5. Let's just see if the range works here. Yep. Um, you can edit these, any of these stones. So let's just do this last one. Uh, I'm going to change this to a, a radiant square. And I'm going to bring this down and then bring it in. I guess it doesn't get uh, smaller than the three on the size list, so I'm going to just change it by hand to like a two by two. Um, that looks pretty good, and I still want it to be kind of undercut here. Um, so we'll just go back um, to figuring out what the offset should be. So I know that. My stone is 2 by 2, so I want my bezel to be 3 by 3, so I'm just going to say 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. So because this is square, I can just apply these, um, whoops, that's not the right thing. I can just apply these uh, to both sides, and... or to both directions of the offset. Um, so the top updates and the bottom obviously updates as well. And um, 
And then you can also change like the shapes of these cutouts by turning the points on. So this object on curve is just essentially orient on curve and you know your these red these curves up here just represent a copy of what's here. So you can, you know, let's just say you decided you wanted this shape to be more like a eight. So you can just update that. Um, and again, these windows can change if you want them to be um, slightly different or you want to raise the stones up or you want to change this stone. Um, I guess the only thing to keep in mind is just that this center is uh, has to be updated alongside that um, dummy that you put there. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. It's really a super easy, flexible way to create something that you would uh, potentially be editing to, to suit different ring sizes and stones. I hope you get the point. So uh, thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful and that you go and make something good.